Well, this session will be um, on trigonometry, and the, we'll, so we'll go through different points, really of two unit, some three unit trigonometry. First thing is what is a radian? A radian is the angle at the centre of a circle, an angle at the centre of a circle subtended by uh, arc equal in length to the radius. So you've got both of those, all those are equal. That's what a radian is. First of all, you've got to know in connection between degrees and radians is, is a pi radian is 180 degrees. You've got to know what pi over 2 is, pi over 3, pi over 4 and pi over 5, pi over 6. And always remember it in those terms and you get multiples of those. For example, that's 90 degrees or 60 degrees or 45 degrees. The next thing is uh, pi over 5 is 36. Don't forget 2 pi over 5 is 72. Pi over 6 is equal to 30 degrees. Next part in, in anything to do with trigonometry is dealing with triangles. And I've, in a simplistic way, I see triangles divided into two types of triangles. There's a right angled triangle and not right angled. And most, all the sums that you can get in triangles can be divided into that, into that context. Now if you take right angle triangles, in a triangle there's three things to look at. is the side, the angle and the area. The area of a right angle triangle is half the base by the perpendicular height and the angles, and this is where the trigonometry or trig ratios come in, that you could have A, B and C and that sine theta is equal to the opposite over a hypotenuse, etc. So the trig ratio is a sine cos tan, the reciprocals, cosec uh, second cot. The triangles that we really concentrate in the, the work in two unit mathematics is, is the triangles which are not right angled and so the situation of knowing the size, uh, angle and area uh, have to be worked out. Now first of all, area of a, a non-right angle triangle is set, put down as in this half AB sine C. Now what that really means is if you're given an angle, you're given an angle in a triangle and you're given two sides and that's an included angle. So when you look at the formula, you must know that side, that side and the angle. So this is half AB sine that angle there. What you look at is two sides included angle. The other part when you have to look at sides and angles, you use the cos rule or the cosine uh, sine rule. When do you use the cos rule? Cos rule is you want to find a side or you want to find an angle. Now let's have a investigate that. If you're given two sides, and you're given an included angle, you can use the formula c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c. In other words, you need two sides and included angle to find the other side. The other part of it is that you're given the three sides. Now if you're given three sides, you can find an angle. I'll just repeat that again. You're given two sides and included angle, you can find the third side, or you're given three sides and you want to find an angle. Cos C, C is the unknown now, this angle here, is equal to A squared plus B squared minus C squared over 2AB. Other part, they're the two aspects of the cos rule. You're given two sides and included angle, you want to find the third side, or you're given three sides and you want to find an angle. Sine rule is used when you're given two sides but not an included angle and you want to find another angle or alternatively you're given two angles which means you're given three and you're given a side and consequently you want to find the other side. Next part is trig ratios, the relationship or trig identities they better instead of trig ratios, we'll call this trig identities. And the trig identities are all connections between sine, sine squared, cos squared, sec squared, cos sec squared, cos squared. The relationships are that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1, sec squared theta is 1 plus tan squared theta, 
and cosec squared, cosec squared theta is 1 plus cot squared theta. This particular sum, uh, the expansions of these uh, sine A plus B all have to be known. There are six of them. S first one, sine A plus B is sine A cos B plus cos A sine B. Sine A minus B is sine A cos B minus cos A sine B. Cos A plus B is cos A cos B minus sine A sine B. Cos A minus B is cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. Tan A plus B is tan A plus tan B over 1 minus tan A tan B. And lastly, tan A minus B is tan A minus tan B over 1 plus tan A tan B. Next part in this work is double angles and the sine A or sine 2A is equal to 2 sine A cos A and then you've got cos 2A or 2, let's put down 2 theta. Now the three forms of this cos is cos squared, um, cos squared theta minus sine squared theta is equal to 2 cos squared theta minus 1 is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Now, it's interesting in some of the sums that you might, well, will get in three unit, might be this sum here. What's the integral of sine squared theta? Well, you have to change this integrand into something you can. The only trick you can do, you can integrate sine 2 theta, you can integrate t cos 2 theta, you can integrate sec squared 2 theta, and if it's not one of those forms, you have to change whatever the integrand is here into something that you can integrate. Now, you must learn it in this way. So if you take these forms here and manipulate, put the one over the other side, what do you get? you get from there, if we look at it, one goes across here, you get one plus cos two theta over two. In other words, cos squared theta is equal to one plus cos two theta over two. And sine squared theta, if you do the same thing, is equal to one minus cos two theta over two. They must be known, these are very important three unit. So this form here would be equal to one minus cos 2 theta over 2, you can take the integrand half out in front and consequently that becomes a half into, if you leave half out, comes theta minus sine 2 theta. The differential of that, of course, uh, becomes 2 out, so you'd have to put a half here, plus the constant. This sum is asked numerous times in the HSC. Question also is common in the HSC is the angle between two lines and the formula is given by here, tan theta is the absolute value. Absolute means that we, we disregard the sine and we're just interested in the acute angle here. If you took the other angle, negative angle, and tan is negative, you end up with the obtuse angle. So we're only interested in the acute angle. Um, what you need in this is y equals, for example, y equals 2x plus 7 and y equals x minus 1 or so. You're interested in the two slopes of the line, so you just say, well, m1 is equal to, in this case, 2. To find the slope of a line, you must, say, put it in the form of y equals mx plus b, and the slope is, in this case, 2 of that line. You can call that l1, and the other one is l2. The slope of this particular line here is equal to 1. You substitute that in both into the formula. Notice here you've got three unknowns. You've got m1, m2, and theta. So the, the questions would all vary around three unknowns. You need two to find the third one. In this case, you're given the two two gradients. You need the angle. You can be given the angle and a gradient to find the other angle. Uh, find the uh, find the angle and the gradient to find the other gradient. You're going to do the differentiation and the calculus and the integration regarding uh, trig functions or tr trig ratios and so forth. 
you have to have limits and you use first principles. They don't often, they would, possibly wouldn't ask first principles dealing with trig. But the one limit they do test to know is the limit of sine theta divided by theta, and theta's in radians, as theta tends to zero is equal to one. Now that, that has been asked. I'll give you an example in 2002. This was the first question on paper 2002 HSE question. The limit of sine 3x over x as x tends to zero is equal to, now you must change this form into sine theta form over theta as theta tends to naught. Each of those has got to be the same. You can't do anything with 3x, can't take it out. So we'll just manipulate sine 3x, you'll put 3x here and if you put a 3 there you'd have to multiply by 3 because they would cancel out as x tends to zero. So now note as x tends to zero, if x tends to zero then 3x tends to zero also. In fact, it goes to zero quicker, so we'll change that. We'll put this over here to explain to the examiners what we're doing. So it's 3x tends to zero, so that's the sine 3x over 3x by 3. And the limit of that, that 3 can be taken out in the front. This is 1, the answer is 3. Solving trig equations is the most important topic in 2 and 3 unit or extension 1 maths. One, one particular question might be something like this, sine theta is equal to 0. Now once you must know, you could draw these diagrams here, say so that the tan of 0, uh, sorry, the sine, the sine of 0 is 0, the sine of pi over 2 and 90 is 1, the sine of 180 or pi is, is 0, and the sine of 3 pi over 2 or 270 is equal to minus 1. The sine, sine of 360 is 0. Cos, the cos of 0 is 1, cos of 90 is 0, cos of 180 is minus 1, the cos of, the cos of um, 270 or minus, minus, minus 90 is equal to 0. And the last one, of course, is tan. And the tan of 0 is 0. The tan of 90 is undefined. That's no value. The tan of 180 is, un, uh, is 0. And the tan of three, uh, 270 is undefined. They are most important to put down that way. And it helps in a lot of sums. Another part is, is for argument's sake, uh, let's make a sum up. Sine theta is equal to a half. Now this is an elementary question just to find what theta is, is plus a half. In this sum here, you would have to be given a range of values. Let's take for argument's sake theta. They want you to find theta between naught and 2 pi. If they leave that out, that, that particular uh, range or domain of values you're going to use there, then it becomes the general formula. Now, in this particular sum here, if you use, you use your Pythagorean triad type of thing, you obviously know that pi over 6, pi over 330 degrees, and the sine, the sine of pi over 6 is a half, and because that's plus, uh, that means that plus, that plus there would indicate that theta is in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. So it's in the second quadrant, as you know, it's ASTC and its sine is positive in the first quadrant and the second quadrant. Consequently, this is pi minus pi over 6. Pi is 6 pi over 6, take away 1 pi over 6, becomes 5 pi over 6. In this sum here, we've got sine squared and we've got sine 2. This was asked in 1992 HSC. Solve that equation. Find out what theta is. So if you've got theta and you've got 2 theta, clearly you must try and make it all thetas. And um, So what do you do? Well, you've got to, you can't do anything with sine squared. 
you've got two theta and you know that sine two theta is two sine theta cos theta, take this over the left hand side and, and the twos will cancel out on both sides, take that over the left hand side and you'll find that sine theta into sine theta minus cos theta. So now you've got a product that by that is equal to naught, so therefore sine theta is equal to zero, or sine theta minus cos theta is equal to zero, which means sine theta is equal to cos theta, and divide both sides by cos theta means 10 theta is equal to one. This one here, of course, as I said a minute ago, if you've got, if you have sine, uh, the sine of naught is naught, so theta, and this is up to theta between naught and two pi. So sine theta would be zero, or it could be pi. And notice it's in terms of radians here, so we've got to put in radians the answer. So this would become this would become naught or pi, and this case goes right around here to two pi. So there's three angles there that have to be put in. Ten theta is equal to one. You go back to your right angle triangle again, one one root two and pi over four. So in this particular case, theta, and that's plus one, so it's in the first quadrant, which is pi over four, or it's pi plus pi over four, which is five pi over four. They're the five answers in that particular sum. Another type of trig equation might be called a quadratic tr trig equation. For example, if it's sine squared theta uh, plus 3 sine theta plus 2 is equal to naught, we can treat that like any quadratic equation in terms of sine theta. You, you could, some people might put u equal to sine theta and you get u squared plus 3u plus 2 equal to zero and find out that uh, what u is equal to, and you can fairly simply see that u is equal to minus two or minus one. And so sine theta would be equal to that. Uh, or sine theta is equal to minus one. Now minus two is outside the, minus two is outside the range of values, so there are no solutions in that sum there. If you draw the graph, clearly it shows, you, you draw the graph uh, for here for sine theta, if I, I take it like so, and you put that's one, and you draw a line across two, where, where y is two, it doesn't cut, so there's no answers for that one. This one, when sine theta is equal to one, we go also back to this original thing here, and the, the answer is minus, sine theta is minus one. Minus indicates that it's got to be in the third quadrant or fourth quadrant. In fact, the only answer for this one in, in a range from naught to two pi over theta would have to be equal to three pi over two. So that's a call a quadratic, a quadratic. Now you don't have to introduce u, you can just put it down quickly in terms of sine theta there, but that, that's the top. Okay, just to, just to revise very quickly, uh, this was a question in 1998, uh, is the limit of sine 3x over 5x? Um, this is HSC questions. You'd have to have 3x on the bottom here. Uh, you put the 5 out, you put 3x, and the 3 would have to come here, so it would be 3 over 5. Uh, you must 3x, 3x, and you change as x tends to naught, 3x tends to naught, so we could do that. Notice the one above it also. HSC question, find the acute angle between the two lines. You know the slope of this line, the gradient of this line is five, you can call it M1 or M2, it's irrelevant. And the, and the gradient of this must make it Y equals MX plus B, so it's Y equals two over three plus eight over three, but it's the two over three is the gradient of that line. And the third part that I mentioned too is the bottom part of this question is the limit from naught to pi over three, but it's sine squared. We can't integrate sine squared. We have to change that into something we can integrate. And sine squared, you must know this formula, is equal to one minus cos two x, in this case it's x, one minus cos two x over two. 
So you change that integrand into 1 minus cos 2x over 2. This particular sum is also 1992, it's question 3. And this is another form when you've got four sine, uh, four, sorry, sine 4t plus root 3 cos 4t. You, you can't collect your terms for that. You can't collect sines and cosines. So here, and it says here, put it in the form. In the form means equal to, equal to this part here. You've got to find, in other words, you, you, can, you, you put all of this e expression here into that form. You've got to find out what R is and you've got to find out what alpha is. And they call this auxiliary angle or a subsidiary angle method. Now, there are various ways of doing this. But sine 4t plus root 3 cos 4t, uh, you, could, you could say that's equal to, if I put a 1 here, uh, which is 1 in front of that, and I put a 2, if I put a 2 under here and a half under there, I'd have to multiply that all by 2. I hope you're seeing what I've done, done here. 2 a half gives 1, which was there, and 2 by that 2 cancels out, and you've got the 3. Now, why do it in that form? So it becomes 2. Now, in this particular thing here, the, we're going to make a half, and so we come back to this triangle, root 3, 2, 1. Now, in that f right angle triangle, root 3, 2, 1, I've got a half, and I've got root 3. So I'm going from a half. What is a half? What's a strange way of thinking about this. But what is a half? A half is equal to, in this particular triangle, is equal to the sine of pi over 6. We normally say sine pi over 6 is a half. I'm saying a half is sine pi over 6. We take a sum like this again. We can't get sines and cosines together. And when I don't have any root signs in front of it, like the previous one had a root sign, there's another method called the T method. And sine theta is equal to 2t over 1 plus t squared, and cos theta is equal to 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. In other words, you now get the unknown as t. By manipulating that formula there and cross-multiplying, you, you can work out what t is, and consequently now. We all know that t is equal to, um, t is equal to 10x over 2. Uh, this is called the t method quite useful in solving sums also. Now, if I go, just have a, a look at another question uh, that um, might be of interest to us, is this particular one here on the bottom. And what does this say? Starting with this identity, and this is using all the work we've just been talking about, the identity of that. It doesn't say starting with it. It's not asking you to prove that. Use that. So it's a sine A plus B. A is theta and B is 2 theta. Well, using that. Now, if you've got sine 3 theta, it says, uh, and using the double angle proved, well, you take one side, side um, and you've got here. Now, clearly, you've got the left-hand side is sine 3 theta, which is equal to that, and then, therefore, it's pretty obvious that sine 3 theta is this. You, you've got cos 2 theta and that. Now, the only, you've got to put all this in terms of theta, or in other words, sine theta or cos theta. In this term, terms of sine theta, you change this into 2 sine theta cos theta by cos theta. So it's 2 sine theta cos theta, and you multiply that is 2 sine theta cos squared theta. Now, you've got cos squared theta, don't forget, 1. Uh, cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is 1, or cos squared theta is 1 minus sine squared theta, so I manipulate all in terms of sine theta. This one here, you've got three forms of cos 2 theta, and you must make it the sine form, so this part would become 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. That part, and you manipulate it, you get that. Look down here now, the equation here, this is all worth 5 marks. Sine 3 theta is equal to and solve that quotient. Well, you know what sine theta is, even if you didn't be able to prove that. You put this part down as the sine 3 theta, you got 2 theta, you can take two th sine 2 theta over the other side. Hope that makes sense then. You use that sine 3 theta, you put this form into here, and you solve for sine theta.